Hey everyone, so next Halloween video, two in one day, crazy, I know, but I'm catching up, or trying to catch up at least. Um, I don't have a headband on right now, it's kind of weird. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, it's a mask. It's more of a masquerade style, but the main parts of this tutorial can be taken and applied to any kind of mask. So if you're doing like a superhero mask, a fairy mask, anything like that, you can just take key points from the tutorial and apply it to your own mask. Pretty much it's just to show you how I get the color on, do shading and stuff like that, make it look more three-dimensional. Uh, I was kind of a sped and actually started the tutorial and already had half of my face drawn on before I remembered that it's really 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 easy if you actually draw out a stencil first so if you just take a piece of paper fold it in half draw out the mask that you want it to be or what it to look like and then just cut it out and then put it on and then like draw your outline around that I kinda of forgot so I had to freehand the whole thing so it's not as even as I would like it uh, some parts are like a little higher, some are a little lower, but it's close enough, so I'm happy. And as you can see, I put rhinestones on it, just using lash glue, just to add a little bit. And then there's absolutely nothing on my actual eyelid or lashes, anything like that. Since I wanted it to look like an actual mask is sitting on my face, I opted not to do anything on my eyes, just to keep it looking more three-dimensional and like an actual mask is on my face but you can of course do products on your eye and then just go a little bit higher with it so that way you can still see the eye makeup and it's not going to blend into the mask and i think that's pretty much okay as you can see i already started step one all you're going to want to do is take an eyeliner or something like that and just go ahead and trace out your shape i just use golden air um what is this soft sparkle eye pencil to trace it out then i took a brush and then i just took white eyeshadow and then lightly pounced it all wherever I drew my pattern and you can get it anywhere on your skin because you're just lightly pressing it on you're not really pressing it like into your skin and the reason I did it very sloppily is you can just take a brush afterwards and then just very lightly brush over your face and then it's gonna get rid of all the loose powder that's on your skin but wherever you had the outline drawn on it's gonna stick there so you'll still be able to see your outline so go ahead and do your pattern all around your face. You can see I just did that half. You can barely see the outline on camera, but in person you can see it. Um, or you could cut out your design, like fold a piece of paper in half and then draw whatever design you want. Cut out the shape, open it, and then do it, and then just lightly trace around that. So it's a little bit easier to make it more symmetrical. If you're scared, you're not going to be able to make everything even. But then just go ahead and finish your outline. And once you have your design drawn on, you can just go ahead and fill it in. As you can see, I already started doing that. You want very, very even uh, color distribution. And since this is a um, cake product that you have to use wet, I found that if I just take a sponge and kind of just stipple it where I need it, I'll get maximum coverage and it'll be nice and even. Then you can go ahead and just take a smaller brush for the smaller detailed areas and just do the same thing and press it in there. And then once you're done with that, go ahead and take another sponge. And then if you're using white, if you're using black, whatever color, take a pigment that's matte in the same color and just set everything on your face just by pressing it on. And then just let it set for a few minutes. Now that I've given it time to set and dry down and all of that fun stuff, now I'm going to go ahead and just take my colors that I'm going to use to do all my detail work. I went more of like a blue and teal vibe, so I'm just going to use this palette. And then while I'm talking about a palette really quickly, a lot of people ask me how I get so many eyeshadows in one palette. Um, you just take out the divider, and then instead of 15 eyeshadows, you fit 26. So yeah, better bang for your but, buck. Now we're going to go ahead and do all of the shading. You can do whatever you want. You can do a design. I'm just going to start with a very light color and just do like some detail work. And I'm just going to go ahead and trace it out. And I'm going to do most of my detail work with this lighter color and then go in later with something that's darker. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. I'm just using Jewel Blue eyeshadow. Uh, 
let's see, let's do something... And just take your time and be very careful with this because if you mess up it's kind of hard to go back and erase but you can always add to it. Okay now you can see all the areas that I want to have the blue on it have the blue so I just did a little bit but you can see it's already starting to help take shape with the mask. Now I'm just gonna go ahead take another color and this time I'm just gonna take a bright green I'm going to use, what is this, bitter? No, 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 no. Or actually, it's one from Sea Shock. I think it's eye popping. It's the brighter of the greens. I think that one was eye popping or Wondergrass. I don't remember. But it's the brighter of the two greens from Sea Shock. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. And I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it wherever I'm going to want the color. Okay, now I have the green in some areas. Now I'm just going to take a fluffy brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of a teal color. And then again, just going to put it wherever I think it should go. And the reason I'm using a fluffy brush is because I'm going to fill in bigger areas with this. But I want it to still be kind of soft. So using a fluffy brush is going to help achieve that because it's not going to apply too much product and then I can just go ahead and blend it out as soon as I apply it. So it's more like that. Actually, let me blend it a little better. Like that. So you're going to get more of a fade from your colors. And then just put it wherever you want to put it. Or again, you could skip this step altogether. It's your mask. Do whatever you want. Now that I filled it in, you can see I pretty much followed my bone structure. The outer sides of the mask are a little bit darker. And then where there's like a raise or like my bone structure sticks out, I went lighter. And then in the middle, it's a little bit lighter. And now I'm just going and taking a green and I'm just using uh, velvet moss. And wherever there's green, I'm just outlining those areas with it and doing the same thing and just blending so I can create highs and lows in the mask to make it look more three-dimensional. Like that. Okay, so now we have that. Pretty much the only thing you really need to remember when you're doing all of your shading is you want to make the mask look as three-dimensional as possible. So wherever light would naturally hit the mask and bounce back in a picture is where you're going to keep light. And then around that area, you're going to deepen and make dark. Um, so since I have everything shaded in, but you can see down here, it still looks light and stuff like that. I'm just going to go ahead and take my 266 brush. And then I'm just going to pick one dark color, one solid color. You could use a gray, a brown, um, a dark blue, just any one dark color. I'm actually just going to use Black Tide eyeshadow because it's that uh, black and silver. And then just pick up a little bit on your brush. And then around the whole perimeter of the mask, just lightly apply it. to give it the effect there's a slight shadow being cast and just to kind of press the edges in to make them seem a little bit deeper. Again, going back to the whole three-dimensional thing. Okay, once you've completed your full going around the mask with your darker color, go ahead and take a flat brush or your angled brush, it doesn't matter, and pick up a dark color of whatever you use. So you could use like a dark blue, you could use the black tide again, you could use a gray. I'm going to use a gray this time and I'm going to use print, which looks like that. It's like a darker gray, but it's not as dark as Nauru. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the side of my brush and not the tip. And then I'm going to set it 
the tip right on the line where the black tide is and then tilt it and lift and it's going to give that nice gradient fade like that and I'm going to do this wherever I want an area to be a little bit more on the contoured side and then for these areas down here since there's the blue but there's that space I'm going to do it there but I'm actually going to draw it down onto the white to create a shadow to make it look like the last the mask has layers so it's gonna look like that I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not okay now that I went ahead and did all of my extra shading and then don't forget around the eyes the reason I put all the extra down here is I'm gonna blend it down and you can see I'm pulling it kinda of far down onto my skin to create a shadow And then what I'm going to do after I have it all blended down, I'm just actually going to go ahead and take my face powder. And then kind of how I did in the smoky eye video, I'm going to use the face powder to fix it or set it. And then get it on a brush. And then blend the face powder up into the shadows you just created so they actually look like a shadow and not just gray or black or brown eyeshadow that's smudged all over your face so now it looks like that you can see there's still that light shadow underneath it but it's not as muddy or scary or rough looking then I'm just gonna go ahead and take vanilla pigment And wherever there's a light spot, I'm just going to apply the vanilla. So on all the areas that still have white or are pretty light, so like right here, and here, just to give a nice highlight. And since vanilla has that pearl finish to it, it's going to make it look like it's more of like a porcelain style mask that's got one of those like iridescent top coats on it with a clear coat on top. But you can see how it's just bringing out all those areas. Now that I've finished with the vanilla I'm just taking rhinestones and lash glue and I'm just doing a little embellishing to the mask and I'm actually just applying them around the whole perimeter of the eye. Okay, now I'm done embellishing. I just put rhinestones around each eye, just in a full circle. It just adds a little sparkle. Of course, if I had reflex glitter in certain spots, it would look even cooler. But now my last step is just going to be to go ahead and do my lips. Since I have so much going on up here, depending on the mask you're doing, like if you're doing a black mask, you could do like a red lip, a dark lip, anything like that. Since I have such light colors in my mask, I'm going to keep it light. So I'm just going to use sore lip pencil. And then, once that's on, I'm just going to take Speed Dial Cream Sheen, which is a nice soft pink, and apply that. This color is like Melrose Mood, but in cream sheen form. So it's not as opaque as Melrose Mood from Heatherette, but the color is pretty similar once it's on. And it looks like that. And then you are all done. And that completes the, pretty, the way that I do a mask pretty much. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and I will talk to all of you soon. Bye.